Hello and welcome to a quick tutorial on how to edge yourself to a spaceship and in this case specifically an X-Wing. A little while ago I posted a video I made with my kids where we flew around some X-Wings and shot down some TIE Fighters and I got a number of people who asked me how I went about and created that. Uh, thankfully it's pretty easy on a scale of difficulty from 1 to 10. 1 being trying to put socks on your feet while they're still wet and 10 being designing your own rocket engine. We'll put this at a 2. Stick around to the end and I'll show you a way to get a couple free models that I've recently created and I'll show you where to download them. Alright, I use Blender and DaVinci Resolve for all my VFX and video editing, and that's mostly because they are free to download. In fact, nearly everything I use for this video is free, with the exception of the X-Wing helmet, which we had purchased for a birthday thing, so we had it on hand anyway. The rest of the outfit I'm wearing is just an orange jumpsuit from Amazon, a few felt pieces, the white felt for the vest from Walmart, which I literally stapled together, and a chest box, which I had created out of a 2x6 piece of wood. Uh, but you came here to learn about Blender, so let's jump into that. I'm currently using... Blender version 3.2.0 and as you can see from the scene here it's just created real basic uh, I downloaded an X-Wing um, from Sketchfab or CG Trader or one of the other free sites I have free where I ordered it exactly um, it's a pretty simple scene hit the space bar here you can see I've got it where the thing just rises up and the wings open and it does kind of a tilt in there as well so what we're going to try to do is place a pilot in there because the pilot is missing uh, the droid is too but we're not going to worry about that today uh, the thing to note with this one this can be kind of important uh, here you can see I've created an uh, empty and I've parented everything else too so if you go into constraints you can see it is a child of the X-Wing empty and this is going to be important for later on use uh, reason being when I have everything parented to that empty and I move it around oops, you know, the entire ship moves with it. So this will become important later when you put the uh, the pilot into the aircraft as well. There's a lot of ways you can do this. I filmed this uh, on a green screen with my kids. And you can do green screen within Blender. I find it's easier to do it personally within DaVinci Resolve. Uh, and that's primarily because I have a lot of footage to scrub through. So it's faster for me. And I'm, I'm more familiar with that than I am with Blender's green screen stuff. So uh, look down for our scene here. We frame 1 to frame 38, so we have 38 um, individual frames that we're going to need, so we'll find 38 frames from the, the footage that we took, and then we'll bring it in. So I'll go ahead and open up DaVinci Resolve. I have the file right here already. Dropped it into the timeline, our correction dropped into the media pool. Go over to edit, and we'll double click on it here. And so we got a little footage of me in front of the green screen here, but we'll need to key it out. Um, not going to be a super in-depth tutorial on how to key things out, but it's going to be I for in, scrub forward a little bit, and we'll do O for output. Okay, we'll just drive it, drop it into our timeline. It's going to be way too much, but we'll, we'll shorten it up here in a little bit. <clears throat> All right, so if we select the timeline itself, go into Fusion, okay, uh, this is probably one of the most easiest things to do. Uh, shift spacebar, your select tool is going to come in here, and we're going to use the delta keyer. Okay, so that's going to drop in there automatically. Uh, if we grab this eyedropper, bring it in, you can kind of see where it's going to match up probably the best. <clears throat> right about there. And let's make this full size. Break this down a bit. Okay, uh, another thing we're going to do is we're going to clean it up a bit. So you can kind of see where it's fading out a little bit. Um, we'll go into mat. Uh, we'll bring some of these down. Clean up the foreground background a little bit and that'll be good okay so we can click back off of that the other thing we're going to need is a polygon but we'll put that on the garbage mat and we will just start you don't have to be super precise on this because the ship's going to cover up most of the uh, area here and there we go okay so we'll jump back in the edit tab. So now you can see we got this black background. Oops, let's fix that real quick. Polygon. All right, good enough. Okay, so we got black background. There's still some coverage here, but again, you'll be sitting inside the cockpit for this instance, and you won't have to worry about it. If it's not going to be this way, then you'll obviously take the time to make it a bit cleaner of a rotoscope, if you will, um, to check to see if we actually have um, the transparent background that we're looking for. We can go into solid color. We'll drop that in there. Solid color, change that to uh, whatever color we want. Orange. Okay, so we know that it's working fine there. So get that out. 
bring it down. The other good thing about the fusion tab here is I know I need 38 keyframes. So from here to here, tell me it's 283 to 396. I know that's way more than what I'm going to need. Okay, so uh, get my calculator out. I can do 396 minus 283. So we have 113 frames. So we actually don't need that much, but that'll work out fine. So uh, 283, we'll go up to 330. Right there. We'll just drop this back. Okay. All right, I would spend a bit more time on this if this is gonna be one of my final products. So uh, what I'm gonna to need to do now though, go to deliver, uh, I'm gonna label this one X-Wing Demo Location. I'm going to save it in somewhere very useful like my desktop, it's responsible. X-Wing Demo, okay. Now here's the important part here. So I want the background to come out transparent. If I do it, now it'll show up as black and that's not what I need. I need it to be transparent. So quick time is what you're gonna need. The co <clears throat> excuse me, codec though, you're gonna GoPro Cineform and that's going to change the background to transparent if you have 16-bit oh, and export alpha. So the alpha is gonna be the background, the transparency. Uh, depending on what you're doing within Blender, if you are wanting a HD or 4K resolution, that would kind of depend on how you're going to export this here. So as long as they line up, you should have no issues. So we'll add this to the render queue, render all. All right, done in no time at all. All right, so now we have that. What we're going to need to do though, however, is open up Blender again. Okay, this time we're just going to go into compositing, use nodes, okay. Render layers, we're going to delete that. Shift A to add. And we're going to have an input as a movie clip. Okay, so there. The viewer shift. We'll just make it like that. That way it's easier to see and we can kind of see in the background. Uh, desktop X Swing demo. And here's going to be our demo movie. Okay. So it's in the background. <clears throat> uh, what we are going to want to do though is change this to cycles, GPU. Uh, color management, this one's gonna be kind of important. So right now it's filmic, okay? We don't want it on filmic, we want it on standard because that's gonna change a lot of the colors. You can kind of see that right there. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do is to create this as single individual frames to add into Blender. I find that easier to work with. You can do video. I don't particularly like it that way. I like doing the individual frames. It's easier for me. So. Uh, if I knew I was only doing 39 frames, it'd be easier, uh, but I'll go back into here real quick. Fusion, so we have 283 to 329. Get that calculator back open. 329 minus 283. 46 frames, okay. So why is that important? Well, for the output here and 46. There we go. Okay, so now if we follow through, it should update, yeah. It's a little bit slower compositing, but you can see where it moves. Okay. So all we need to do now is for the output, we need to change it to where we're going to this thing, X-Wing Demo, just create a new folder here. Dialog. Call this X-Wing Demo. And we'll leave the underscore. and leave it open because then it's gonna just do it sequentially. Accept. Okay, uh, PNG is fine. Everything else is fine. All right. So all we're going to do now, render, render animation. This should be quick. So you can see it's flying through all of these right now. Okay. Well, it's just finished up now. Again, that didn't take much time at all. We have a few more frames extra than we need, but that'll give us some more to work with. Um, always film more than you think you're going to need because uh, ran into issues where I had other stuff where I was trying to fit in. And I just didn't have the footage to use it, so I kind of had to just make, make do with what I had. So always film more than what you have. All right, we'll actually close this one out. I'm not going to save it. So here, we're back into this one here again now. Okay, so if you don't have images as planes available, go into your uh, add-ons, type in images as planes, or images, and make sure that's checked. Save that there. 
Okay, so for this collection here, okay, this is where we're going to add the pilot. Well, actually, we'll just uh, disable that in the viewport so we can see inside here. It's a pretty detailed model. It's pretty nice. I'm going to do Shift A. Oops, that wasn't it. Shift A to add, and I'm going to go down to Image, Images as Planes. Actually, hold on one second. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's change the origin point right there. Shift A, Images as Planes. And what we can do is you can do Animate Image Sequence. Okay, so we will just select all of them. A for all, import images as planes. Okay, so it is parallel with the surface. So remember how we said the, the X-Wing was kind of turning. Uh, we got on that Z-axis, right? So it's, it's moving and the image is staying independent of it. We'll click on this one here just to make it easier to see. Okay. So we need to make this image line up with this. So when you look at this uh, head-on, the actual image itself, okay. Why didn't it let me grab it? Okay. So when you look at the actual image itself, you can move it around. When it is straight on, you can't really tell much that it is um, not. Uh, 3D image. I mean, there, there are ways to look at it, and you can, people who, you know, if you look for it, you can tell. But, all right, so what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to line up this image right here with what we're, uh, you know, trying to put in the cockpit. If the camera stays facing directly on with the image, it's going to give the appearance of having some depth. So, and actually, I think this image is flipped. Oops. There we go. Okay, so now it's way off, right? But that's fine. So all we are going to do is we'll go back into our camera view, okay? And we are going to just rotate it. And we'll move it. G, X, up scale, G, X, right there. G, Z, okay, so. That's way too close. So we are going to now, same thing. We're going to make this a child of that empty. Okay, so now when I touch the empty and I move it, the pilot stays with it. But it's still too close. So let's, uh, let's just change this up a little bit. Okay, we can move them back about as far as you can. Because when we look at it, all right, maybe even scale it down a little bit, drop it down just a touch, move it over. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, so for those in, in cockpit shots, all I would do is I actually place the camera about like right here. You can scale it down so it's real small. And again, those parts down here where we didn't. Um, key out very well, you can't even see those, so it becomes irrelevant. But the part, important part was that the background is transparent, so we have no issues there. And if we go on different screens, the picture actually changes in there, which is important. So that's what we got going on. All right, so if we go back to our camera, look at it. We now have our scene that we're looking for. All right. If we look in the world, I actually already added an HGRI. Oh, we will add the canopy back in. Let's go forward a few frames. Right up there. All right. We'll hit F12, see how that turns out. All right. Take a little bit to render, but that's looking pretty good. And an important thing to note is that this actually has some shadows that will go across here that's created. Um, they won't have any real ridge definition as it goes across like the bridge of your nose or anything like that. So one thing to keep in mind, you know, there's no, it is a flat image. So the shadow on this is going to be completely flat. And that'll kind of give away the illusion that there's a, not an actual person inside of there. But overall pretty easy. Um, if I were to do this entire sequence, I would 
render it out as an animation and then that animation you can find within the media pool and you can just drop it in and it'll play very simply so so the video i made was only possible because of people offering free 3d models to download on places like cg trader or sketchfab so that's where i've gotten most all my models from and so i figured to pay it forward i'll uh, would go out and create some of my own so uh, first one i started off with was my uh, practice run i did a old rendelli star drive dreadnought a 600 meter long uh, old capital ship the republic times and from there i was able to create the more modern uh, assault frigate that was uh, d derived from that, or kind of modifications to it. So, in addition to these two, I'm also working on a Lancer frigate. So this one's just in the early stages. Should be done hopefully here pretty soon. Uh, all these models are available on places like Sketchfab and CG Trader. I'll leave links in the description below. Uh, if you could go ahead and get in here, try these out. Let me know how I can improve on these models and make them better for you guys. These will again all be free. Um, I appreciate the people who have put free models on there. I just kind of, again, wanted to pay it forward. So thanks again. Try them out. Give at least some feedback. Let me know uh, ways I can improve on them or if they are good enough for whatever projects you guys are working on. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.